pumping water, referring to using a well in groundwater, is pulling water out of the ground and it can have a variety of effects depending on the location, the geology, and the pump rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of consequences of pumping groundwater and talk about equations and things that you might have to use to calculate these effects. So the first is looking at a cone of depression. So when we turn a well on, and so pumping is turned on, water is drawn to the base of the well, so at the bottom, imagine this vertical line is our well. Water is drawn down at the base because that's where we have a screen with an opening to suck water out of the ground. So all the water that's around the well will be pulled down towards that location uh, to be extracted to the surface. So what happens is we go from having a water table up here to our water table has been depressed. It is essentially the sides of the cone coming down the well. So we can calculate how large the cone of depression is by using the equation for the volume of a cone. So the volume equals pi, which is a constant, 3.14, times the radius squared, and the radius is if we go from the well out to the edge of the cone of depression at the top of the water table, that is the radius, times the depth, so from the top of what used to be the water table down to where the point of the cone is here, that length, divided by 3. So you can expect to do uh, calculations for the volume of the cone of depression. Make sure you have that equation ready with you. If you are in a coastal environment, you could be looking at something called a saline intrusion. So more dense salt water for here we have an example of the ocean, is drawn towards the well uh, into the ground, and as we're pumping, it's drawn up towards the well. And if our pump rate is too fast, the salt water will actually come up to the well, and instead of pumping fresh water that's sitting on top, we'll actually be pumping salt water, which we will not be able to use. So that could be a very bad thing. But what we can do for saline intrusions is we can calculate the rate that the intrusion is moving or being pulled in towards the well so we can figure out how much time do we have at this pump rate until the saline intrusion actually makes the well and the equation for that is going to be velocity or rate is distance over time so say we had no saline intrusion and this uh, pump rate was on for 10 years. We'd have a scale, we'd figure out the distance, <clears throat> and then we would divide it by the time 10 years. And then we could figure out, by rearranging the equation, how much time do we have until the saline intrusion reaches our well, which is going to be this. The time we have is the distance, that's from the saline intrusion to the well this time, divided by the velocity that we just calculated to figure out how long until our well becomes contaminated. The last pumping related thing that we're going to look at is a potentiometric surface. So a potentiometric surface is the elevation the water would rise to in a well uh, because what we're looking at is under the land surface, the contour lines in brown represent the land surface, we have a confined aquifer, which means it has an aquitard sitting on top of it, so the water in the aquifer is under pressure. If we were to take and drill a well and poke a hole, that pressure would be released through the well, and the water would rise on its own to the elevation for the lines given in blue. So we actually have two sets of contour lines on the same map, which might be the first time you're ever seeing. The brown ones, again, are land elevation. The blue lines represent the potentiometric surface. So what you will often be asked to do is to shade in everywhere on this map that if we were to drill a well, we would have to not do any pumping, that the water would rise to the land surface or higher on its own. In order to accomplish this, we need to look at the blue lines, again for the potentiometric surface, and their elevations, 
And we have to look at the elevations of the brown lines for the land surface. So we see for the land surface we have a contour index contour line of 700 next to an index contour line of 800. Remember index contour lines are every fifth line so that means between every line looking at these faint ones we take 100 which is the difference between the index contour lines 800 minus 700 divided by 5. So that means that each line the elevation goes up by 20. So 700, 720, 740, 760, 780, 800. We look at the elevations given for the potentiometric surface, 700, 720, 740, we can see that they're also going up by 20. So what we want to do is everywhere that the potentiometric surface line of a given elevation, this one 700, hits the land contour line in blue of the same elevation, we make a dot. So the land elevation line for 700 hits the potentiometric surface line for 700 at these two locations. We make two dots. We then go to the next potentiometric surface line is 720. So we are one line above 700 for the land surface. So we make a dot at 720. And 720, because both of these lines are one above the 700 for the land. We then go to the next potentiometric surface line, 740, which is another land elevation line up from the 700. And we make a dot on each of those. Then the same thing for 760, 780, and 800. I'll get all my dots on here quickly. So we have made again dots for each location where the land elevation contour line is the same value as the potentiometric surface elevation. We go ahead and we connect all of these dots. And now we're ready to shade. It's either going to be the area here or the area on the outside. And what we need to think about is we need to think where is the land elevation lower and the potentiometric surface elevation getting higher. So we're looking at a valley because we have a V-shape here. We see our lowest elevations are in the center. It gets higher as we go out from the sides. So that means land elevation is lowest in here and it's higher on the two sides over here. For potentiometric surface, we can see that potentiometric surface is getting higher as we go down, so it's higher in here, and it's gonna be lower if you were to go up on the sides here. So because the land is lower in elevation here and the potentiometric surface is getting higher, we know we have to shade in this part of the map. So I'm gonna do it with a highlighter, so hopefully it can go kinda of quick. So what we have figured out by looking at the two sets of contour lines is that if we were to drill a well anywhere in this shaded area, the water would rise at least to the land surface, if not higher on its own. Everywhere outside that we did not shade of that area, the water would not rise to the surface on its own. These are some of the effects and properties associated with putting in a well and turning it on that you can expect to analyze and do calculations for in an introductory geology lab on groundwater.